What are the upcoming changes to Microsoft's PL100 exam? And how would they affect you if you're taking this exam? Hello, I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Well, the PL100 exam is the Microsoft Power Platform app maker. So this is where we make Canvas apps, model-driven apps, and Power Automate flaws. So in the PL900, which was the fundamentals, we had to look at what apps are, what flaws are. In the 100, we actually make them. And you can see the candidate envisions and creates solutions to simplify and automate tasks and processes for them and their team. You might be using Microsoft Teams and some other apps, but here the focus is on the Power Platform. Now, if I scroll down, you will see that there are three different skills measured. Design business solutions, create solutions, and analyze and visualize data. Well, at the moment, the design business solutions has around a third of the marks associated with it. And that is going to go down to under a quarter, to 20 to 25%. And so this create solutions, which is then going to be called create business solutions. So the focus is not just on Power Platform for personal use, but for business use. So for create business solutions, it's going to be 60 to 65%. So with these changes, as of September 26th, 2022, the focus is going to be much more on the create business solutions rather than designing and analysing and visualising. Now, if I scroll up, we can see we can download the PL100 study guide. And we will see that we have got these major skills, but within them, we have got various subtopics and then bullet points. But these bullet points are just intended to illustrate how you are measuring this skill and there may be some other topics. So I'll go down on this screen, the current PL100 requirements up to late September, and we'll see what is being changed. Now for the design business solutions, apart from the change in the weighting, very little is actually being significantly changed. The major change is that the design data model section is going. But for me, that's no great loss. It really is more background information. You can't really create a Canvas app, a model-driven app, without being able to identify required tables, their relationships, and the columns and data types. Now, there are some tweaking. For example, this now becomes create a high-level structure for a new data source. Determine the required Power Apps app type we've now got for a business solution. So again, the focus is now being maintained on the fact that this is for business. Describe use cases for cloud floors and desktop floors, and then describe use cases for chatbots in Microsoft Teams. So it's just refining exactly what it's looking for. As is this, define data output requirements. That is very general. It's being changed to select reporting options for business solutions, including views, Power BI visualizations, and dashboards. Now, for me, most of what is here in the design business solutions is really covered in the create business solutions. You can't, for instance, design a chatbot without actually understanding the use cases for chatbots. So let's go into the Create Business Solutions. And we start off with a section which is being renamed to Manage Microsoft Power Platform Components During Development. So instead of environments, the emphasis is on components. So we've got Create a Dataverse Solution. We've also got new Import a Dataverse Solution and Import or Export a Canvas app or Cloudflow. So at the moment, it's just adding existing apps. What about if we wanted to export them? Strangely, however, the add existing apps or flaws to a solution is also there as a separate bullet point. The run solution checker and interpret the result is being deleted. The next section is about create model driven apps. And this section was always a bit odd because we've got things about canvas apps, which really should be in the next section. The update takes care of that, moving them into the next section. It is being a bit streamlined, this section, so create a site map goals. But this could be part of the recent changes to how to create a model-driven app where you don't need so much of a formal site map, you just drag and drop instead. 
embed model driven apps in Microsoft Teams channels and embed a canvas app on a form in a model driven app are also removed from the new requirements. Added however is create and configure model driven dashboards and when you say that you go oh yes a model driven app is all about dashboards where are they in the first place? We've got forms, we've got views, they are part of the dashboard but where's the dashboard itself? Well I would say it's part of the compose model driven apps at the top but they're just being a bit more explicit. The share model driven apps is again being a bit more specific with other users and groups. The next section create canvas apps is really being expanded in terms of the number of words but not so much in what you actually have to learn. So it's now two sections create and manage canvas apps and create screens for canvas apps. So when you have a look at some of the bullet points create canvas apps for instance doesn't actually tell me anything more than the heading does. However we now have determine when to use forms, galleries, buttons, labels, input controls, images and custom controls. It's being a lot more specific. Similarly configure Microsoft Dataverse. There is a bit more specificity in the configure security roles that is now being called describe how Dataverse uses RBAC and add table permissions to existing Dataverse security roles or BAC's role based access control. Being removed from this section is published customizations and being added is described use cases and capabilities of and in this case the of is business rules. Now this is a new thing in the PL100 exam. Business rules is part of the PL200 exam but now we've got an introduction to them in the PL100. Now we'll see a lot of described use cases and capabilities of in later sections. For instance there is of chatbots and AI builder but for me they don't actually add anything to the section. If you know what Microsoft Dataverse is then you know for instance the use capabilities of Microsoft Dataverse. If you know what chatbots are you should know the uses and capabilities of chatbots. We can then go down to create Microsoft Power Automate flows and there are two changes which are of interest. First of all create adaptive cards for Microsoft Teams is being removed as is the and SharePoint so concentrating more on Microsoft Teams. And the thing that's been added is create a desktop flow for personal use. So this uses Power Automate for desktop. So if I have a look at this web flow for instance, you will see that this is a flow which launches Internet Explorer, extracts details from the web page and adds it to an Excel worksheet before closing the web browser. So that's the sort of thing that you need to know but only in a high level. Create a desktop flow for personal use. Now I would say a high level simply because it is only one bullet point. Now building desktop flows was a major section in the PL200 exam but is being removed as of the end of September and there it was seven different bullet points. So I think it is more of an introduction to Power Automate for desktop and the main thing if you wanted to go down this route is covered in the PL500 exam which is all about Power Automate RPA developer. Going down into the chatbots, create Microsoft Power Virtual Agent chatbots in Microsoft Teams. Create a chatbot is being expanded to create a chatbot that uses topics and trigger phrases. So just a little bit of clarification there. Now there are quite a few changes to the analyze and visualize data. The create Microsoft Power BI reports seems to have been completely rewritten. So now there is zero emphasis on Power BI desktop. It's all about the Power BI service. And this to me makes sense because the Power Platform in terms of Canvas apps and model driven apps, well they are all online so therefore if you're going to be communicating with Power BI then you need to be using the online version of the Power BI service. Additionally Power BI desktop is significantly covered in the PL300 Microsoft Power BI data analyst. So that could be another reason why they are taking a bit of emphasis away from the Power BI desktop in the PL100. So this section now has five bullet points as of late September 2022. 
create a simple report from an existing data set by using Power BI service. So previously we just had create a report and you could go into huge amounts of detail for report, but a simple report from an existing data set, that is probably a lot more simplistic in terms of what you have to learn. Create Power BI dashboards from existing reports. So that is getting visualizations or tiles and putting them into the dashboards. Create and configure model driven dashboards is in this section as well. Embed Power BI dashboards and tiles in Canvas apps and model driven apps. So that is embed Power BI content, but now being a lot more specific. So embed dashboards and tiles. And then finally share Power BI dashboards. Again, we're not really looking at reports. So we're looking at reports for creating in Power BI service, but then we want to create dashboards from them. Now being removed is the embed Canvas apps in Power BI reports and dashboards. So you have to do it the other way around, but you no longer will have to embed Canvas apps into Power BI reports and dashboards. The implement other reports section is being deleted, but these two bullet points are being moved into the create and consume Power BI dashboards as it's being called now, not reports. The thing that's being deleted is merging data into a Microsoft Word or Excel template. And then finally, we've got the describe AI builder models. There's no major changes there. We've just got the deletion of the words preparing data and. So we're just describing the process for training models. Again, that makes sense. If you're training custom AI builder models, then you need to have the data in the right format in any case. So in summary, there's a lot of small bullet points that are being deleted. So embed model driven apps in Microsoft Teams channels, embed a canvas app on a form in a model driven app, design data models, load or create data records for testing and development, publish customizations, create adaptive cards for Microsoft Teams, merging data into a Microsoft Word or Excel template, and anything to do with the Power BI desktop. What is new? is running a Power Automate flow from a Canvas app. So this is explored in more detail in the PL200 exam. So this is probably just an introduction. In other words, I just pressed go and there it is. You're not looking at inputs and outputs. Creating a desktop flow for personal use and describe the use cases and capabilities of business rules. So the emphasis is being made more on Canvas apps, model driven apps, and Power Automate flaws. Well, I hope that was of interest to you. If you would like any assistance in learning how to do any of these things, then please consider joining me for my PL100 course. So in around 16 hours or so, we'll go through each and every requirement of the PL100. So we're looking at Canvas apps, then we go on to model driven apps, Power Automate components, and much, much more. But if this is looking at too much detail for you and you just want to know about the Power Platform at a high level, then please have a look at my PL900 course. So this is all about fundamentals. So we'll be looking at all of the components of the Power Platform. We'll be looking at Power BI, Power Automate, the Dataverse, Canvas and model driven Power Apps, the Power Virtual Agents, the AI Builder and more in around seven and a half hours. There are plenty of quizzes as you go along, so you can be sure that you are learning. And then at the end, in addition to a bonus section, we have got a practice test. And this is true for the PL100 course as well. I've also got courses on the PL200 and the PL300 for Power BI. Well, thank you very much for joining me. If you like this video, then please click that like button. And why not subscribe and click that bell? That way you'll be notified of any new videos. There are links to my Udemy courses in the description to this video. Thank you very much for watching this and keep learning.